Hi, my name is Daniel Dessa, and in this presentation, I will be talking about our paper, Inductive Entity Representations from Text via Link Diction. In this work, we're concerned with knowledge graphs, which we define as a data structure containing a set of entities, a set of relations, and a set of binary predicates that indicate the existence of a relationship between two entities. So knowledge graphs are useful to represent information about the world, and they are used commonly in search engines and social networks and in the scientific domain. Uh, the figure to the right shows a small example that contains information about a couple of countries in the city. So interestingly, we know that this graph is missing some information, like the type of the country Peru. And this is a problem that appears also in large scale knowledge graphs. This visualization shows a subset of Wikidata, a knowledge graph with more than 50 million entities. And this graph is constantly changing as contributors add information to it every day. And some of the added information might later uh, need to be corrected or modified. This means that in general, Knowledge graphs are noisy and methods for querying them, such as Sparkle, are bound to retrieving incorrect or incomplete information in some cases. So in this scenario, machine learning can help us to exploit patterns in the structure of the graph to provide predictions that are robust against uh, noise in the knowledge graph. Some of the tasks that we can tackle with this approach are clustering node classification, query answering, and link prediction. A common approach towards this is that of learning knowledge graph embeddings. So these are vector representations of entities and relations in the graph that are optimized so that a certain algebraic operation of the representations follows the facts stated in the graph. So for example, assume that we have an embedding for the city of Amsterdam. So we can optimize it so that when adding the embedding for the relation capital of to it, the result is close to the embedding of the Netherlands. This is a translational model known as TransE, and it's an example of how we can model facts in a graph with embeddings. So in spite of their predictive power, this approach has a serious limitation. And that's that embeddings are only optimized for a set of entities that is fixed before training. So this means that if the graph changes and new entities are added to it, it will not be possible to make predictions involving the new entities since there are no embeddings for them. So in the worst case, this would require rerunning the optimization algorithm. And the consequence is of particular importance given the dynamic nature of knowledge graphs in real life. So we refer to prediction involving entities not seen during training as inductive prediction. In our work, we study an approach that uses textual entity descriptions as a source of information to obtain an embedding for an entity regardless of whether it was observed during training or not. Even if short, entity descriptions are usually available for multiple knowledge graphs used in the literature and also in industry applications. And also other properties such as dates and quantities can also be considered. So to learn embeddings based on a textual description, we define an encoder that takes as input the description and outputs an embedding. This is done for each pair of entities that occur in a triple. And then we proceed as before by applying a relational model, such as the translational model, on top of the entity embeddings produced by the encoder and the particular relation embedding. So this gives us a simple algorithm for learning representations of entities based on their descriptions. In the first step, we pass the description through the encoder to obtain an entity embedding. For relations, we start with a randomly initialized embedding for each relation in the graph. 
And then in the third step, for each triple in the knowledge graph, we maximize a loss function that assigns high scores to observed triples and low scores to unobserved triples that are likely to be false. These are obtained by corrupting an observed triple, for example, by replacing one of the entities by a randomly sampled entity. So in our work, we, we study the use of a transformer-based neural network as the encoder whose weights are initialized with BERT. So we call this method BERT for link prediction or BLP. We then experiment with multiple scoring functions, each of which makes different assumptions about the geometry of the embedding space. So this, is, this allows us to determine different interactions between the encoder and representations of entities. A key question in our work is, what are the generalization properties of entity representations learned via link prediction objective? So are they useful for more than just link prediction? So since the encoder can now map entity descriptions to a vector, there could be other applications, probably not even related to the graph, on which it could be useful. So in addition to link prediction, we study the tasks of entity classification and information retrieval. So in the link prediction task, we experiment over graphs based on WordNet, Freebase, and Wikidata that range from tens of thousands to millions of entities used during training. So, and we explicitly evaluate the performance of link prediction involving entities not seen during training. So as best lines, we uh, consider bag of words methods that use GLOV and BERT embeddings for initialization and then take the average of the embeddings, which discards uh, word order. We also consider DKRL, which is a method that does take order into account by employing a CNN but it requires normalizing the input text and removing stop words. Lastly, we compare with Kepler, which is a language model trained with an additional link prediction objective. We observe that BLP in combination with different scoring functions results in the best performance against these baselines. In particular, it outperforms Kepler, which also uses BERT as an encoder, but a more involved training procedure. In the second task, we evaluate how informative the entity representations are. We take the encoders trained for link prediction and freeze their parameters, and then use their output as features for a classifier of the type of an entity. We compare with methods not explicitly trained for link prediction, such as taking the average of word embeddings, or uh, as BERT, which also uses BERT, but is trained to preserve similarities between texts. And in these results, we see that the representations produced by BLP are better at compressing the entity description as they result in higher accuracy for the classifier. And in the last task, we consider an information retrieval problem. So, Given a query that seeks for an entity, return a list of documents ranked by relevance. In this case, we again freeze the encoder and we use it to encode both queries and a set of documents initially retrieved by a BM25 system. And then we compute their similarity between them to produce a re-ranking. And the queries that we consider vary in form. We, they can go from well-formed questions like, what is the longest river? To keyword queries like bicycle, holiday, nature. In this table, we show the NDCG results for the BM25 baseline and the results when adding a particular encoder for re-ranking. And we show, show results over queries from short and ambiguous to natural language questions to the right, and then the results when considering all types. We observe that BLP results in statistically significant improvements over BM25, which indicates that it has learned to map questions about entities 
and their descriptions to vectors that are close in the embedding space. When observing a particular example, we know that while PM25 retrieves documents based mostly on string matching, introducing BLP helps to retrieve semantically related documents. In the first example, uh, in the query, who founded Intel, it retrieves persons related to the query, and in the second, a list of all American inventions, it retrieves more documents related to inventions in the US. So in summary, our work shows that entity representations learned with a pre-trained language model, fine-tuned for link prediction, result in superior generalization performance that generalizes to unseen entities in link prediction and entity classification tasks, as well as information retrieval tasks with natural language queries that do not require fine-tuning the model. We expect that fine-tuning the encoder for other tasks can result in, in further improvements. And for future work, we're interested in predictions also involving relations, not seen during training, incorporating alternative entity representations such as hyperbolic embeddings and computationally efficient textual encoders. All our data sets and implementations are available online on GitHub. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you for listening.